Welcome everybody. Uh, welcome for to the fintech track of Community Over Code 2023. Uh, there's old faces and happily new faces and old faces that we see each other via Zoom or Google Meets for too many years and now it's it's a great thing to be in the same room. Uh, and let's kick off this, this uh, track with the first uh, presentation from Mikhail. So welcome, Mikhail, and the floor is yours. Thank you. <clears throat> so my name is Mikhail Dolosh. Uh, I'm, I can say I'm new to the open source world. It's been uh, more than a, a year, one and a half year. Then I met Baselow and we started uh, or I joined this project, which I'm about to talk. Uh, I owe you uh, an explanation that uh, although my presentation says Finaract for enterprise, enterprise customers, Finaract is not for enterprise customers. Finaract is for, for people like you and me who has loans, who has uh, uh, accounts, checking accounts. The reason why I had this sketchy title is to get you in this room. Uh, and uh, the story is going to be still interesting because Finerect can be used by a large enterprise. And uh, my story is about getting Finerect to that point when a large enterprise is able to leverage its capabilities. But first of all, let me give a, a quick intro just for the sake of context. Probably most of you know about Finract. I will be super short, but those who might not. Finract is a system of a record, or short name SOR. This is a core banking software. It allows you to have uh, accounts, manage accounts, checking accounts, saving accounts, loan accounts, uh, <clears throat> do the general ledger accounting, the basic functionality that a bank may need. But the most uh, interesting part is going to be probably the customer. The, we are talking about a, a client of ours who is one of the big ones, having over 30,000 employees, 25 billion revenue, playing in the league of the top in NASDAQ 100. So it's really not the corner grocery store. It's not, not a, a small pub which would like to manage loans for its customer. We are talking about a scale uh, of this size. Why would a, a company of this size would turn into open source? So the trigger for our project was a few things that open source brings in. No vendor lock. With open source you can easily manage uh, your vendors, or much, much more easier than closed source. Licen license fees was another, another reason why they turned uh, toward an open source solution. With this, I think it's fairly obvious how open source helps in this case. But the third point is control over destiny, which they articulated that was an important point. What does control over destiny meant for, for them is uh, a, a bit of the two points above, but as well managing the functionality that this solution can bring. With a, with a big solution, buying from a vendor, they have less possibility to adjust it according to the actual business need. They need to make some sort of a degradation of the, the initial demand and requirements to match that system. But here we have much, much more flexibility that we can add. And there's one more point, which is with question mark, performance. And uh, that was the triggering point probably of the discussion. Is this solution performant enough for, for this need? And the Kotel Pirar has nothing to do with the topic, I just like the picture. Okay, so performance. 
the performance requirement that the that the customer or the client needed wasn't something that uh, makes the most of the developers knees shaking. So we are talking about API performance, 500 transactions per second uh, maintained and less than one second. This is not something crazy. An API should be able to, to meet that. That's probably not the uh, <clears throat> most demanding part. But that was another, another part as well, batch processing. There's a certain functionality in the banking world, close of business. This is at the end of each day when certain functionality is run, certain things need to happen, certain calculation takes place, interest calculations, fees added. This is happening in a short period at the end of the day and for all of the accounts. Now we are talking about a larger scale than FINRA usually supported so far. The demand was for 4 million loan accounts, processing them within an hour. So as I mentioned, that performance was a question mark. Our project began with a proof of concept. <clears throat> the demand wasn't that high, so the proof of concept took place and uh, it actually proved that FINRAC is capable to serve these demands. It's not necessarily exactly matching for the first run what was asked for, but it could prove that the capability is good enough to meet. A, a proof of concept is just a proof of concept. There you have the possibility to bend things, to cheat a little, just within the range that later you, you can get it right, you just have to prove the capability. So we use the largest uh, instance that AWS could offer that's helped. We had to hack a little bit the application uh, to make meet these uh, performance bars. Uh, we were using data which is not 100% correctly repre representing the population of a production system, but these were good enough to make the measures right and prove the capability of the application itself. So the outcome was the launch of this project because FINRAC is capable to respond to these loads that the customer demanded. So what is the story about? It's about a journey that we had. It has multiple aspects. Uh, we had to lift performance, scalability, and technology upgrade that needed to take place. We had to work on quality assurance testing because we are talking about an application for a bank. I will talk about it later. But this is a story about a team as well. This is a story about understanding the business that we are working in and the story of governments to governance as well. <clears throat> so let me start with the few upgrades that immediately needed to take place. So we changed the, the database. The pure reason for that, or the initial reason is, is performance. We changed to uh, using, changed to Postgres. Uh, the meanwhile, is, uh, FINRA keeps on supporting other databases which already existed, MySQL or My MariaDB. Uh, nevertheless, the performance was better on, on Postgres. And it gave other possibilities too, which is partitioning, for example. Although we didn't have to use partitioning till that point, but the capability is there. And probably it is something in the future which we will. The persistence layer was changed as well. Uh, Eclipse Link got introduced uh, instead of OpenGPL. One of the reason uh, is, again, performance, obviously as well as uh, licensing question. Uh, OpenGPL reached end of life and uh, Eclipse Link had a matching uh, licensing policy rather than Hibernate. So the community quickly had an agreement to use that one. Apart from these short immediate up upgrades, which originally happened quick for the POC and finalized during the project. 
there were other uplift of this application. For this size of a customer, it needed to be much, much more scalable and robust. So technology uplift was necessary and uh, key areas, one was the batch processing. So at this point, Spring Batch was introduced to FINRAC replacing the old batch management system, which enables quite a lot of functionality, parallel processing. It can process multiple chunks, uh, which is important not to lock certain loans for a long time. At the same time, it helps getting the COB run for certain loans or those loans which are already picked up for processing very quickly. It prevents the conflict of uh, online transactions, so the, the banking life cannot stop for hours while th these processes are running. So we needed a, a solution which, is, which can operate with the online transactions happening at the same time. For the uh, jobs that we have, the batch jobs has certain steps. This needed to be configurable. Not all the steps executes every time. Spring Batch offered uh, easy possibility to make it happen. Retry and error handling and finally catching up. Sometimes in case a job for certain reason cannot be executed, we have to re-execute later. Uh, but you will hear more about these in Istvan's speech today later on. There was one more thing which is, which is uh, served the robustness of uh, Fineract happened in the last year is the event framework has been rewritten or strengthened. There's a persistent event layer today in Fineract replacing the earlier GMS implementation. It supports diverse needs of the customer as well. So you can replay events from now. It's uh, an at least once delivery is uh, uh, added. And uh, an interesting side effect of this uplift was that the earlier used ETL processes didn't need to happen anymore. In the previous solution, there were jobs picking up data, extracting from the database of the previous SOR, which has been replaced completely by using these events. This is the protocol that is used uh, is Kafka and as well AMQ. The later one is with a specific demand from the customer as the technology ramp up that they have at that point didn't support well Kafka. But the capability now is there in Finrax for either protocols to be used. Kafka is used as well, by the way, at other places. Again, more about the details later on today. Another function which we added to Finaract was the business date concept and the close of business. So this is a, a bit of part of the topic, the uh, control over, over destiny. Making a disconnect from the physical date and having a logical date introduced to the system allowed things to run bad, bad jobs independent, more or less, of the actual time. This is a topic Adam will go into details later on. I think tomorrow I won't use all of the gunpowder for his speech. Nevertheless, uh, this allowed multiple things for the customer and as well giving a good point of recovery for data recovery whenever it's needed. So one of the future points probably for Finract is uh, how to enable disaster recovery in this environment. And this is an absolute must uh, for this to happen. <laughs> Apart from these uh, bigger items, there were many, many functional changes that got introduced to. I won't go into details of all of them. Uh, the list is, although not infinite, quite long. These are all available in the open source version and uh, for the benefit of all. Nevertheless, as I mentioned earlier, there are other aspects of this project, not just technical and functional changes. 
but there are learnings in, in other areas. One is regarding quality. So Finneract is not, in my read, a regular open source project. This is an application by itself, which is able to support banks. This is not a library that you can use, or this is not just a technology that you integrate into your systems. This is a system by itself. So the testing has to be approached a little bit different as well. It has unit test, integration test, low level. It's part of the code base available for everybody who is working on it. But Finneract is providing a business functionality, a capability for a bank. It doesn't stop at the code level. You have business processes integrated. You have functionalities for serving business needs. These need to be tested somehow. And I believe that this is still one thing which is not well supported in the current open source setup. What I mean is we extended the, the test that we had. We have coverage for business functionality. This is something that we proprietly do. It's something which is not shared to the open community at this point because the infrastructure and the methods are, are not provided yet. Nevertheless, we have uh, extended our, uh, extend, extended the, the test. This is using Gherkin, which is matching well the, the business need and the, the level of requirements, how they are articulated. And it allowed us to have different tests at smoke test, regression test, run at our convenience. So another learning for me is how it, it is important to manage these things in these open source projects. And it, you don't necessarily have to rely only what is available. You have to build some for your own. But there were other challenges. <coughs> One is the team. So we are talking of a team of less than 10 people, let's say. So we, we are working of a, an enterprise of 30,000 employees. And how can a small team succeed in this environment, which is completely, completely different of the previous uh, circumstances? So we had to compose a very diverse team. I think the topic of this conference is community over code. It is two-sided code and community. So this is the community piece. So the need which you had Diverse skills, Java development, FINERAC knowledge, very specific, understanding the financial market, understanding the US market, and, and have technical leadership involved. So this is a, a mix of skill set. So, so we had to compose a team which is able to cover that. And uh, the open source community, I think, is a good start uh, because that's where you can find people. But it doesn't end there. The way I got involved, I'm new to open source and this community. It's, but the open source community is, is a starting point for the network. So you can reach out to people who have skills which are not closely bound to, to open source. Finally, we ended up with a team which more or less able to cover uh, these needs. Although I believe even if not all of them, there's a good overlap that is enough to cover even the, the special use cases. One of the special use cases, I believe, is business understanding. We are working with a giant customer, leader in the market, understanding how their business operate and what their need is, is not trivial. And we are geographically distant as well. So me, I'm living in Europe. Some of the team members are from Mexico or from India. US was a very specific thing for us, where we had to understand certain particular needs which weren't present in these areas. One example for that is how banking is done in the US, how transactions are processed. And the good example how this diverse team could somehow map these out is I had the luck to live in the US for a while. I experienced that 
wiring money in the US is not like in Europe. I can make a wire transfer in five minutes, and it's basically what it means in Europe instantly. In a second, you get the money. It's the same protocol. It works fine. But the US is, compared to that, is a mess. Transaction may or may not happen. You figure it out two days later that the thing that happened didn't really happen. So this, these tiny understandings uh, were needed to get through certain things. And uh, again, the diversity of the team helped to gap many of the things. Turning back to what were the needs, the Java needs, technical leadership, understanding the business, all of them. And the way we managed it, and that's my next topic in this project, is governance. So we have to set up a way of working, how we operated. <laughs> I promised to mention that it's somewhat similar to SAFE. We had, a, we had a, uh, an agile framework in which we work. Nevertheless, uh, we had a continuous discussion with the customer. The reason why we needed that, they had requirements. They were new to the open source world as well. And their requir requirements doesn't always make sense for an open source community. For a product which is used in many places, diverse business cases, few are for large customers, so we were somehow a filter for them, deciding whatever makes sense, whatever doesn't. Again, a, a powerful piece in open source that it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to use only what you have open source. You can easily connect your needs to that. You can add your closed source. There is one initiative within Finerac to make it more modular. And the reason for that is there are some things which is you don't want to disclose. This is so-called uh, secret souls that you want to keep in-house. Or it, the same way, it's just something which doesn't make sense in open source. You keep it in source, that's not a problem. There's a fine line deciding what makes sense for the community and what not. So we were helping and working closely together to draw this line. Again, governments had another important aspect to make this project su successful. As I mentioned, it's an agile team working in iteration with a big company. So it start, started with planning. I think it's often in the agile world underestimated the importance. Someone says that a plan is nothing, but planning is everything. Planning is continuous. So we started with a qu quarterly plan. But when you plan, the, the thing that is under your control and what you understand, that's what you can basically plan with. The agile frameworks are meaning to address the unknown. If you have understanding of the code, understanding of the business domain, if you have understanding in FinRact, the technology, if you have a good coverage, a good understanding, then you are more certain in your plans. It will change, definitely. But the certainty that you have in your plans is much better, and the planning is super important in an environment when you are dealing with a company which has 10, 20, 25 other teams who rely on your product. So project management is basically dependency management. In this area, dependencies will rule everything. You have to understand what are the other teams that rely on your work that can work after you finished certain points. And that come planning, you have to be able to tell at what point you are going to be ready. And there comes the same thing. If you understand your product, your technology, all that lies behind, the more accurate that is. And here comes a team, which is a diverse understanding. You can put it better together. So I think what we did really well in this project, that we did these predictions fairly good. Well, not all the case. So we were slipping. We were slipping certain things a lot. But at the same time, we could have a good understanding and keep it transparent to a level that didn't make any problem. So one learning from my career is that managers, I'm, I'm not afraid of problems. 
they, they don't have an issue that they face a problem on the project. They have an issue if they face the problem late because they are not able to react. The important thing for them is to have that information early in time so they can manage. That's, the, that's why they are managers. They manage these. They won't have control over it. That's not possible. They have control how to react. So I believe that one, pro, one uh, good thing with the project which helped the, the success is this continuous discussion and expectation setting, uh, which happened over time. Even if we were slipping, I think it was obvious and we could define what is the point which we should concentrate on, even though one of the delivery may come only later. And let's see <clears throat> where we ended up. So this was a project, I believe, very successful. We delivered in time, which is not necessarily exactly true because we slipped a little, but it wasn't noticeable and didn't cause any problem. All the things which were depending on us was taken care of, even with delayed in one, a one year pro project having a delay of a month or so, didn't make any problem. So basically we can say we delivered on time. The customer just learned had the quickest ramp up ever. A project like this, rolling out a banking software, having millions of loan on the software, running the nightly job, that's not, a, not an easy endeavor. And usually it took, as we learned, three to six months. Now we could do it in four weeks, from zero to 100% without any major issues. This was something which the customer hasn't experienced so far. That was the first time that the project was launched with these circumstances. And another point of the success that we could create a cost cut for the customer, which is estimated over $2 million in five years. So again, this is a, this is a number which ab absolutely make worth to start playing with open source, even for a customer or rather for a customer which is in that size. And I would like you to hopefully leave this room with one, two takeaway or thought you are mine. <clears throat> For a POC, it's a POC. You just have to, you don't have to do everything right. You just have to prove the capability. That's a starting point. There might be tricks, there might be trade off, but that focus is very much on that. We learned after the fact that the POC wasn't only a proof of the system itself, but was a, a good proof of the team as well that the willingness was there to make this project happen, and this was a huge plus for the customer. <clears throat> Sec second learning, based on my example, that you should harness the open source community as a starting point from your network. So you can reach out to talented people who are not necessarily involved directly in open source, but a connection of someone who is in your network, in your open source community. That's how probably we could build up the team which helped make this project happen. Uh, and the third things my takeaway is the continuous adjustment of expectation with the client, that the necessary work and planning that was put in it, is, 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 that was the thing which again was essential to make this project succeed. So I hope you will have a, a few takeaways as well. Uh, and thank you for listening to me. In case you have further questions, feel free, I'm here till the end of the conference. Uh, my availability you will find based on the, on your, on the QR code. Thank you. If you have any questions, feel free to raise now or remain silent forever. <laughs> no kidding.
Uh, well, I can. Uh, I joined last beginning of last summer when the POC was already over. So I wasn't there right from the beginning. Okay, just talking to this one. So I wasn't there right from the beginning. But I think the POC happened early 2021. I may be wrong with numbers. So, yeah, sorry. The implementation was over a year, that a, a bit, bit longer than a year. But it uh, wasn't only the functional changes that were required. There were many functional changes. Probably that was the smaller piece. Non-functional requirements were the, the bigger lift. So introducing Spring Batch, for example, that uh, that was one of the longest uh, uh, epic that we worked on. Good question. So the question was how, how much the safe methodology and the incremental planning helped? Am I raising it right? <clears throat> My answer for that, that the iterations that SAFE has should be aligned with the business iteration a company has. So usually that's when chief executives define strategy and have a visibility on the next one quarter. It's usually one quarter because a company which is traded publicly has quarterly reports that gives the cycle of... Uh, this quarterly planning in SAFE, although it can be different. In our case, by the way, we learned that it was a bit different. Definitely planning helps. It needs to be continuous. In our case, we started with the PI planning. We continuously had elements which needed to be addressed, and whenever it came up, that was the, that was the point when we went into uh, deeper analysis and planning. I believe this is something which might be a point to improve for a future pro project to follow these sequences much more strictly. Although in our case, it wasn't something that could have made the project fail. So what is my opinion about project management in the early stages? So, okay. So the staffing question, I believe this is something which follows the entire project life cycle because you may need different skills at different points. So you have to get back to it from time to time. And you have to adjust it as well. Testing, for example, for planning, you will need different skills, more technical leadership, figuring out how the test framework is going to be. Then you involve more testers who will start executing and creating the test. So you, your staffing should be adjusted accordingly, if that's possible. Life brings in challenges as well, so you, you constantly get back to it. Project management at the beginning of the project. I believe that's because of it somewhat my trade. It's important. I think, again, one of the helpful thing was that there was a clear goal of the project uh, emphasized or explained by each and every stakeholder of the project. So we had an alignment what we actually would like to achieve, and when do we believe that this project is, is successful. So there was slight differences in vision, but we concluded one thing, that when is actually our project successful. And that helped a lot in prioritizing and cutting things, because we couldn't do everything that originally we imagined, but that was already obvious that in case to achieve the project goal, 
where, where do you can do the cut. And that, that was the, since, from the very, since I, I joined the project, that was the first thing I, I started with, understanding each of the stakeholder, when do they believe that the project is successful. But it was a, a level of education for the customer, and as well, they got, got used to it. And recently, the discussion wasn't about that this thing we are not doing because it doesn't make sense. This, is, this became more open. That this thing probably makes sense for open source. And they even come up with things that, no, no, we are going to do it. We understand that it doesn't make sense for you guys. So probably there was a, a sort of education and over time learning from the customer as well, how this thing work. They were new to open source too. So they were open to understand how this world is functioning. Alexander? Yeah, the, the, so, so the, the short answer is no, because I, I don't have access to the, to the secret source. Although I, I got a estimate or guess. I would say 90, 95%, 90% probably could go to open source. There are certain things which were specific that didn't make any sense that remained. But that's, that's a guess. How do you mean there was a gap? The, only the customers and developers were developing mm -hmm. That's correct. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. In case there are. Oh, questions, you'll find me somewhere around here.